last year, um, you also exercised your rights by holding Uganda's first pride. And mm -hmm. those pictures that uh, went around yeah. the internet were some of the most breathtaking, <laughs> unbelievably brave pictures I've ever seen. And you yeah. in your in your white <laughs> suit with your hat. Yes. Uh, that was fabulous. So are you it planning, a, are you planning, tell me a bit about that day and, to, and are you planning a, a number two, a, a second march? Oh, first of all, yes. We are having our um, Pride Week uh, late July, and then we shall have the parade in early August. We are yet to come up with the day uh, of the parade. Uh, but uh, if I remember, I think one of the best moments in my life was being at the parade, because I, I participated in all the events. I actually, me and my colleague Kasha, we opened the whole Pride Week. And that evening, I was very, very excited because I was just looking at the room uh, full of people and you know some of the people I could look at faces and I would say some of the people in this room are not going to be able to come for the parade but at least they are here because they were afraid to come to step out and come but at least they are here and then we're going to look back many years and say you know uh, why was the, even the Ugandan society so much concerned? Why were we worried about, you know, why, why was there too much fear? It's all good now. We're having, like, maybe the parade by then will have thousands of Ugandans participating in, in, in it. And for me, I was really, you know, just thinking about the future, looking at the people and, you know, multiplying them with millions and thousands of people. And when I was speaking, I was just looking at thousands of people, not only the few people in the room, and it was very exciting. But the parade, first of all, I loved my outfit. <laughs> I was very happy to be able to, <laughs> to express myself because I'm always, you know, this uptight, wearing suits and ties, going for these official meetings. But I felt casual and nice and, you know, colored up in, in, in Uganda with my rainbows and my outfit. It was very exciting and then having the people around. And I took one photo, posted it on Facebook, and within, I think, um, within about one and a half hours, <laughs> it had about 800 shares, <laughs> <laughs> and it had about <laughs> 4,000 likes. Not like, surprising. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, by the end of the day, I think I had about 5,000 comments or something. But and it was shared all over the world. So I was like, you know, it, it showed me a lot of solidarity. And then in my, it, it actually was very, prayed in Uganda was very inspirational for me because I looked back and said, how can we be wrong? Because sometimes um, these conservative people, they put you in a corner in Uganda. And mostly when it's um, someone close, maybe a family member, or someone you've known for a very long time and they come up to you and they make you feel unwanted or they make you feel that honestly your sexual orientation is wrong or you're abnormal or you're immoral. It's more hurting than you know a stranger coming up and telling you this. And then sometimes, you know, I'm only making 32 now. I know Growing up, I've been struggling with all this. And sometimes you're pushed in the corner and you ask yourself these several questions. Could I be really immoral? Could I be really a sinner? Could I be really wrong? Did God make a mistake with me? So for me as a human being, these questions you know, have been running in my head a long time. But at Pride, I was, I was like, no. How can we be wrong? You know, <laughs> this is like <laughs> right. Stay <Mistake> here. <laughs> you know, mistake. <laughs> at least, you know, we have. We, uh, I've seen if if someone posted a picture attacking a gay person or saying insulting us, would have all you know the whole world saying and saying what you're doing is wrong. But I sent out my picture at prayed, and the whole world is saying, "Go, Frank. That's really nice." And I'm like. Can we be wrong? I think this is, I think I'm, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not wrong. You know, it clears out those things that keep on coming in your head. And the world is standing with yeah. you. And, and your understanding. And for me, it's very, it was very inspirational. I think it, it gave me a, a step forward in my activism and in my work. And mostly, I was very impressed that turn, people turned out in big numbers because we expected less than 30 people or 25, and we had about 120 people. Amazing. So for me, it was very, very, very inspirational. And 
it also showed me that you know gay people in Uganda are just tired of being violated. Like, enough is enough. If it's about if it's death, because you know with um, with with the parade, and I thought about it the night before we went for the parade, and I'm like, you know, um, I don't if I don't pray or I pray, but I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, and whatever happens, I tried, I did my best, and I thought we could get killed, all of us, you know, because you're in the you're in the streets, you're in a public place, and it's many of you, it's very obvious, it's about LGBT rights, you have rainbows all over. A crazy, a, even a crazy police officer could come up with a gun and shoot all of you because he's homophobic. Or people could just get violent and we are only 120 of us and thousands of Ugandans come and down on you. And I thought about all those things and I thought about many, I'm like, oh, but I'm also very public and I have this outfit that's going to be standing out so I could be zero dawn and someone just comes and attacks me. But still, I was like, no. I think I have to do it. I'll be there tomorrow and I'll be proud and I'll stand out and I'll do it, whatever it takes. And we did it and um, the police came and stopped the parade in the evening and uh, we were actually detained for a few hours. Although uh, personally I refused to be detained, they told me to get in the police van and I, and I refused. But my friends were taken in and I went in with my friends. And then of course we met, I, I made several calls there to different people I know, engaged with the police and everyone was released. And we stayed at the police actually for, for, for a while. And when everyone left, I remained behind with my other two colleagues and we still continue to engage with the head of the police and tell them this was a party. So we didn't see any reason why you, you, you came to interrupt our party and our pray. So I think next time they will not because I made sure by the time I leave that we, they don't. Although some of them were still insulting and you know, saying, oh, this is something you're learning. You, you're just promoting immoral behaviors. We are having a wedding. These sort, sorts of things. But I made sure that by the time I leave, because that's what I try to do. All the time when someone is homophobic, I want to leave them changed. Every time I meet with a homophobic person, I want to leave them changed.